Greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, Robert Meyer Burnett. I invite you to watch and listen to the Designing Hollywood podcast, brought to you by Martika Abera and the great, legendary Hollywood costume designer, Marilyn Vance. I am afforded the wonderful opportunity of co-hosting the show. If you are interested in the magic of Hollywood, the design of Hollywood, the clothes of Hollywood, watch the Designing Hollywood podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts from, or find the video version on the John Campia YouTube channel. That's right, the Designing Hollywood podcast. Why would you ever want to miss it, especially if you love the movies? <laughs> Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and of course, your Pharaoh of Physical Media. That's right, me, Robert Meyer Burnett, and I'm Rob, casting at you from the Rob Observatory. You, you, Imagination Connoisseurs, you members of this, the Post-Geek Singularity community. Today's a sad day. It's also a joyous day. It's a sad day because... I'm going to have to be here myself and rock you like a hurricane because our favorite German, Mr. Dieter Bastian, is in Zabrucken, Deutschland, working the night shift because his, his company works 24-7 making transmissions for cars all over the world. So once a month, I have to relinquish him to them, to whatever they're doing in Zabrucken, whatever machinations, whatever they're into. I don't know what they're into, but it's uh, something to do with transmissions for cars, so... If you're here for Dieter, I'm going to have to disappoint you. I'm going to have to let you down. But, but there's momentous things happening today on the show. Momentous, I tell you. First of all, this today, April 14th, 2024, is in fact the day before tax day. But not only that, this is my actual today, not some other day. This is my actual, not my birthday today, although that's obviously the case too, but this is my actual ninth anniversary on YouTube. The very first time I ever spoke on YouTube, was ever any kind of a pundit on YouTube, was nine years ago today, April 14th, 2015. I was on the sixth episode of what was then called AMC Heroes. And um, you can actually go back and just look up at AMC Heroes episode six. It later became Collider Heroes. Uh, but that was back when, and, and and who did I stream with nine years ago? Well, the late, great John Schnepp, my good friend John Schnepp, called me up and said he was on YouTube doing YouTube shows. And nine years ago, YouTube was something I went to and watched uh, trailers. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do a lot on YouTube. I went and watched trailers. I, I didn't watch a lot of pundits. I weren't, I wasn't watching makeup tutorials. You know, I wasn't watching unboxings. I wasn't doing any of that. Not nine years ago, I was I was like most of the industry at the time was not really aware of of the power of YouTube. Um, but so today is today is my anniversary for better or for worse. And then in 2018, believe it or not, 2018, six years ago for the holidays, my lovely lady Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, who has her graduating art show. The opening is this Tuesday at Claremont College. Uh, if you want to come, if you're in Southern California, come to her show. Everyone is welcome. There'll be beer and wine. Woohoo! And you can see her giant canvases and her work and talk to her. But she got me this microphone. She got me this microphone. I, I got a sticker from another friend of Frederick Douglass, which I stuck on this microphone later because Frederick Douglass is a great statesman. And if you haven't read his 4th of July speech, you should. But anyway, so I've had this microphone since then. I've been, I've been talking then. Yeah, I have these Sure microphones, and one day maybe, maybe I'll replace it, but it, you can see it's not hooked up. But um, I've got two of these, actually. So if we start, let's get, I mean, uh, whining about movies again. We've got two. Bring them in. Uh, but anyway... So it's, I can't believe it's my ninth anniversary on YouTube. So a profound thanks 
to all of you who continue to watch me on this platform, continue to support me and all my programming, and people like Dieter and, and everybody else who's on this show, Lael, uh, RM, Israel King, I mean, uh, everybody, a profound thanks from everybody here, Mike Bodden, the Post Geek Singularity community wouldn't be here without you. I wouldn't be doing this show. This is the 149th episode of Let's Get Physical Media. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You know what else I can't believe? You know what else is coming? So we've been talking about this audio drama, the the Nathan Heller casebooks, true noir. The Nathan Heller casebooks um, based on the Nathan Heller novels, the 19 novels deep series, Nathan Heller novels, written by the great Max Allen Collins. It looks like we're going to be launching the crowdfunding this week. We've been really putting our, getting all of our, our ducks in a row, our eggs in a basket, all of that. And um, it's going to be an impressive crowdfunding campaign. It's going to run for 60 days. We're going to need your help. Uh, we have money to make the show, but we want to do a lot of other things with the show, which is why we're doing a combination of private equity and crowdfunding. I have to say, uh, you can you can get a taste of what we're looking at. So here is, of course, done by Bartos. I kid you not, our artist, one of our artists, we got Jason Spriggs and Bartos working on this in various various capacities. Here is Bartos's, this is the 16 by 9 version of our poster art. He Bartos created the True Noir logo, and the first case book is the assassination of Anton Cermak. Um, I, I mean, we're going all in on this show, and... I'm obviously directing it and sort of overseeing it, producing it along with uh, with Phil and, and Mike Bodden and, and Max Allen Collins himself. But this morning, I woke up to the actual first script of the first episode. So we've already recorded, and you'll hear it, when, if you haven't already heard it, you'll hear it when we drop the crowdfunding campaign uh, of the... We did a 12-minute proof of concept, so you can actually hear what does a fully immersive audio drama sound like. It's not a book on tape, and I like to call it a movie, but without the pictures. But this morning, I read the first script, and now people would say that I'm not prone to hyperbole. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm prone prone to hyperbole. However, uh, I woke up this morning, and Max had sent me the first script. We're going to be recording this all uh, at the end of May, and hopefully we'll be debuting it in the first two episodes in a movie theater at San Diego Comic-Con. That's the plan. I have to say, you know, this show is why I even met Max Allen Collins. I, I had never spoken to him. I knew his work. I bought his run of Batman back in the 80s. Um, I knew that he had written the graphic novel that Road to Perdition was based on. But I didn't know him. And in 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 serendipity or a serendipitous moment, he knew Mike Bodden. And Mike, of course, some of you know him. He's my business partner. Where we have Imagination Connoisseurs Unlimited. And somehow my name came up while they were at lunch uh, because Mike lives out by where Max lives in the Midwest, uh, in Iowa. And um, they started talking and we got on the phone together and I talked to Max. So I, I did not know Max Allen Collins, but he watched this show. Max Allen Collins watched Let's Get Physical Media. We started talking, and now we're doing this 10-episode audio drama, fully immersive audio drama. And I read the first script this morning. He sent it to me. First thing, I rolled out of bed, and uh, uh, I, 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 I don't doom scroll, but you know, there's a lot of news to look at. So I went to my email, and there it was. There was the first script, 33-page uh, script. And oh my God. Like... To say that I was blown away, I mean, I didn't, I expected it to be good. I expected it to be good. Um, but I didn't expect it to be this good. And I have to say, you know, again, I leave the, 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 the final, you, you, you imagination connoisseurs are the final judge of these things. But of all the things that I've been involved with that I get to make, this is one of the first times in my life that I have kind of total control over the personnel and how I wanted to how I want to present it and what I want to do and and everything and and working with Max I mean obviously part of that is knowing to trust Max Allen Collins to write the scripts so to get it this morning uh, with everything else going on in the world that's distressing to get a piece of work from somebody you already admire and to know you're going to make it that to me is like the greatest thing in the world and so here's to you Max. And uh, buddy, it's on. It get to work. You got nine more scripts, man. <laughs> All I can say is, uh, you know, 
put your wife, put your pinup wife down and get back to work <laughs> on these scripts because they're damn good. And uh, no, your wife's lovely. And if she's your inspiration, as I know she is, uh, keep, keep going, buddy, because you, my friend, I'm looking forward to a long and fruitful collaboration. Okay, let's start into what this show is actually about. First of all, I joined A24. A24, you can become an A24 member, which, because A24 has Civil War in theaters now. Now, I didn't know what it meant to be a member of A24, and in the mail, I'd totally forgotten I'd signed up for A24's membership plan. I got this. I got an A24, it's like a magazine, you know, and uh, uh, within the magazine, I got uh, my all-access A24 membership card. And I got my little member thing that you can tag, you can put on your keychain, which is pretty cool. And I got an A24 like lapel pin. Like if I, it makes me want to go buy a jean jacket just to put this on my jean jacket. And then um, this uh, this this magazine, you know, it's uh, kind of nicely uh, printed. And this uh, this is a celebration of multiplexes, and um, it's kind of neat. Just a picture of. All kinds of things that are in multiplexes. I, I didn't know I was going to get this. You know, I'm like, okay, that that I, I guess this weekend is an A24 weekend. I mean, A24 is, in my mind, the only the only time. I mean, when I worked at Full Moon, we had a we had you could you could Full Moon was had that kind of thing promoting fan base. But uh, I think it's really interesting that A24. I mean, I've seen people online. I've met people that are just A24 fans. The brand. I mean. I would have thought that Jason Blum would have covered that with Blumhouse, but no, A24 did, So, uh, which is great. Now, speaking of A24, let's talk about what happened at the box office this weekend because it was extraordinary. Um, as, as Iran attacked Israel, and by the way, kudos to Jordan and Saudi Arabia in addition to the United States for jumping in and helping stave off Iranian missiles, um, which was surprising, but necessary. Uh, civil war here in town, not the, uh, it's not a real civil war, but it's the movie. It destroyed the box office in terms of what it is and, and what they were expecting. So our friend Anthony D'Alessandro writes to us from Deadline. Civil War takes box office spoils with 25.7 million opening, the best ever for A24. A24 is calling Civil War at a $25.7 million opening, largely fueled by Democratic and liberal moviegoers, but with an overperforming business in some red state regions like the South and the Southwest. Screen Engine Comscore's post-track pulled Civil War attendees' politics, recording, reporting that 22% considered themselves liberal, 19% were Democrats, 11% considered themselves moderate, um, which is wild. Um Whereas registered Republicans were 6%, evangelical Christians were 6%, and politically conservative folks, 5%, showed up as a minority. The markets that overperformed were LA, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, Austin, Navy Hub, San Diego, and conservative market Denver. But then there were smaller regional markets that rallied, including El Paso and Waco, Oklahoma City, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Charlottesville, Virginia. As we told you, South, South Central, and the West were the best regions for the A24 release, which follows journalists chronicling a divided, violent America. Rival studios concur with A24's projection for the Alex Garland movie, This AM, which is both the biggest opening ever for the filmmaker, the previous being 2018's Annihilation at $11 million, and the New York-based studio. This is after an 8.76 million Saturday, which was 11% up from Friday's pure 7.9 million, and that doesn't count 2.9 million in previews, a very good result. Many are impressed with how A24 got this divided movie across the finish line with a great result. However, I'm told they did spend on P&A, and their most, it's their most expensive movie of all time, which costs more than 50 million, with around 20 million in marketing. The comps here are old, but the opening for Civil War beats other nation in peril political thrillers, including the wide break of Catherine Bigelow's Zero Dark Thirty at 24.4 million, Oliver Stone's World Trade Center at 18.7 million, and going way back, Ed Zwick's 1998 martial law NYC movie, The Siege. Uh, all unadjusted for inflation. Some rivals snipe that the movie is front-loaded. We shall see. A24 is expected to keep a sizable portion um, 
of PLFs and IMAX, and those picks do a 3 to 3.5 multiplier at the box office. 400 IMAX auditoriums rang up 4.2 million of Civil War's weekend, or 16.5% of the overall opening. In leading up to the release, IMAX did a re-release of Garland's Ex Machina with a first look at Civil War. Overall, PLF and IMAX repped close to half the weekend's money. AMC Lincoln Square, New York City, uh, Civil War's top grossing location is now at $130,000, which is pretty extraordinary. Uh, Post track also shows that there was indeed walk up business, with 64% of Civil War's moviegoers buying tickets same day. Of those buying tickets, 27% identified as frequent moviegoers buying tickets on opening weekend. Some 46% of those said they attended due to the subject matter and plot, whereas 39% cited the genre, and 31% said it looked fun and entertaining. Because Civil Wars are always fun and entertaining. So, pretty neat. Uh, Good for A24, and now I'm a member. So, here is the domestic box office for the weekend. Civil War at $25.7 million. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Uh, It was, let's see, was it, oh, it was down 101 theaters, it made 15.4 million this weekend for a total of 157.9 million. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire at number three uh, made 5.8 million for a total of 96.9 million. Kung Fu Panda 4 rocked out at uh, 3 point, or 5.5 million for a total of 173.6 million domestic. Dune Part 2 made another three uh, 4.32 million with only a drop of 42%. Dune week to week has had incredible staying power, incredible legs, and domestically Dune Part 2 has made 272.1 million. Now remember, people are are talking about how much Dune made, is it a success? Legendary Pictures they're calling this movie 190 million, but let's round up and make it a 200 million dollar movie. Legendary paid for 80% of the budget, like they did with Dune 1. So you're looking at $160 million spend on Legendary's part. Now remember, Warner Brothers kicked in the rest, and Warner Brothers was paying for marketing. And if you go by conventional wisdom, half the box office, half of what the movie makes worldwide goes back to the studio. So let's just say they bring in, I don't know, uh, 350 to $400 million, $350 million. Let's call it $350 million. If Legendary is first money out and they get their $160 million back, let's call it plus 50. So if you make $50 million profit on a $160 million spend, now I'm not including overhead for Legendary and whatever. I'm just I'm just going, that's not a bad result. Uh, if you're getting 30%, 40% return on your investment, not bad. So I would say that Dune 2 is a resounding hit. Bring on Dune Messiah, baby. Let's see that white savior myth shatter. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, anyway, Monkey Man, number six, makes $4.1 million for $17.7 million. Not a bad result. Kudos to Jordan Peele for rescuing that film from going to direct to streaming and using his deal at Universal to put it out theatrically. You go, Jordan Peele. Way to stand up for another filmmaker. Love to see that. Steve Asbell, the quiet king of franchises, the president of 20th Century Studios, oversaw the first Omen, which is, my friends, a banger. Mark Kermode said Immaculate's better. Mark. Mark, I love you, buddy, but I disagree. Anyway, $14.6 million the first Omen has made. Uh, I wish it made more. It's beautifully directed. The Long Game, which I'm unfamiliar with, uh, has made $3.1 million. Shrek 2, a universal re-release. Who would have thought Shrek 2 would make $1.35 million? And Sugar Agent... Wait. Uh, Sugar August D Tour D-Day. Is that a rap movie? <laughs> Suga August D Tour D-Day? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Suga... Maybe it's an Asian film that I'm unaware of. Suga August D Tour D-Day. Okay. Uh, that made $2.2 million. That's got to be something. I am woefully uninformed. I'm an old man shouting at clouds on Suga Agent Detour D-Day. I'll have to look that up and find out exactly what it is. You know what? That's why I have the internet. Let's go take a gander uh, at what this is. I'm just going to... You know what you do? You just take the title and you just punch it into Google. Tour D-Day. The movie's a 90-minute musical documentary that offers fans a first-hand experience of his electrifying 2023 world tour under his stage name, August D. With the August D tour, 
Suga sets a record as the first member of BTS. Okay. Now it all makes sense, man. BTS, of course, I'm a Black Pink fan, obviously. I mean, BTS is just a bunch of cute dudes. So Suga set a record as the first member of BTS. So, okay, okay, Suga, I get it. To embark on a solo world tour performing and sold out. So uh, he went into military military service, which is a, what maybe he'll he'll lead the way for all youth to join the military because looks like you're going to be there sooner rather than later. But you go, you go, Suga. I'm down with that. All right. Um, so now you know. Now you know what's going on. Um, Suga. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, I could editorialize, but, you know, sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes, as a physical media fan, things just happen that you weren't expecting. Now, as many of you know, as many of you know, I've had a long, sad process with Conan. Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer were released individually and in a box set from Arrow. I had ordered them months before, and for whatever reason, Amazon did not help me. I got no love. If I went to my Amazon account, I just went before I started the show, it says that they have no release date available because I bought the double disc box set that had both movies in it. That's what I, well, that's what I ordered. So I went outside yesterday. Now, keep in mind, I looked at my Amazon uh, uh, this morning, my Amazon orders. It said no release date set. However, however, yesterday, I went out just to see if there we got any mail, you know, as one does. Look what showed up. That's right. In 4K, a Grail Disc Conan. The Barbarian, my box. I don't know if they repopped these. They made more because they sold out. But Amazon still claims that they have no release date. And yet, and yet, this showed up from Amazon. I mean, I ordered it months and months ago. Uh, but, you know, these are the things you stress out over. I, st I wanted this box set. I probably will never, ever watch Conan the Destroyer. I'll give it one look. But there's a book in here. You know, the, I love... Arrow does these banger releases. I love these box set. You go, Arrow. Um, but do I have to worry about with Nail and I? You know, do I have to worry about Narc? I hope not, because I want those both in their box sets. But now that the long, dark night of the soul that was not getting Conan for me, now that it's over, well, I feel good. I'm just sorry I didn't get to share this moment with Dieter Bastion. I mean, he had those things. He had these in the background just to taunt me. He's not here today. He's probably in the live chat making sure he's... I'm not going to do live chat today, just so you guys know. In case you were really wondering, is Rob going to do the live chat? No. No, I wasn't going to do the live chat. So, yeah, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of the women. That's right, John Milius. You go, buddy. So, hey, you know, the one big giant hole in my physical media collection is now filled i love it when the hole gets filled don't you uh that's what she said but and maybe I, irene jobson's here i mean it was 69 for her yesterday it's 70 today maybe not as much fun but still i'm just saying um and i did get other discs and uh i did get a nice box from our unofficial sponsor kino lorber continues Kino Lorber, my God, they just are just dropping the fire, dropping the heat. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you. I gotta show you. So Kino Lorber is still putting out documentaries and and indie films on only on DVD, which I understand, and I understand the whole marketing and the whole the whole thing behind that because Tango Shalom only came out on DVD. I get it. I understand what they're doing, but but uh, and I I don't understand. I mean. <laughs> Kino Cult, they did send me, it doesn't even say Kino Cult on here, but it's another redemption title, and it's marked as number one. Uh, Purge This Evil, Phantasmagoria. Now, I'm not sure, is this supposed to be Kino Cult title number one? Phantasmagoria, um, uh, set in gray, black, and, de or set in a, set, set in a gray, bleak, and decrepit European town, uh, an American investigative journalist is looking into a series of macabre and strange phenomenon. 
that have been impacting the local residents. She suspects that it is something in the water. Audrey encounters a local girl, Valentina, who, surrounded by caged birds and speaking in demonic riddles, warns of a great evil infecting the town. Then Diane starts to change. Phantasmagoria is like no other film you will have seen. Imagine John Rowland mashed with, uh, I can't ever pronounce his name, Bartowitz, and then the resulting work imagined by Jess Franco, Visual Blasphemy, or Awesome. So thank you, Kino Lorber, for this. I've never even heard of this, but it contains strong violence, horror, bloody images, and nudity. So come on. That's just something that makes me happy. Then, uh, this is a movie called Karaoke, which is a Jewish film, which I'm going to, it looks like it's joyous, as many Jewish films are, because watching the anemic attack uh, Iran launched against Israel be completely, almost completely staved off by everything from the Iron Dome to a coordinated effort by Jordan and uh, Syria. And you have Americans out there wishing that they'd succeeded. You guys have your hearts in the wrong place. I'm just saying. Remember, we have seen yesterday what's really going on in in there in the in the Middle East, and it is it is Iran. They put a ring of fire around Israel. They want to disrupt. You got the, it's it's all about the Shia and the Sunnis, a 95% Shia majority in Iran, and uh, the Saudi Arabians are no fans. So, hey, anyway, that's a whole different show. Uh, this is Lost Angel, the genius of Judy Sill, another great documentary about a singer-songwriter I've never heard of from the 70s. Cool cover, though, too. And I got to say, I really like Kino Lorber putting out these docs because they are great. Now, again, you get these cool movies, uh, and it's too bad that Dieter wasn't here for this one, but Invi The Invisible Fight... A Rainer Sarnet film, an explosive mix, get this, this is what it says right here, an explosive mix of Kung Fu, heavy metal, and Orthodox Christianity. <laughs> I kid you not. I don't know where, I've never heard of this, but now I have it on Blu-ray. And this is like right up my alley. Uh, so thank you, Kino Lorber. And then a movie I actually saw when it came out that I remember liking, but um, uh, I don't know if it's still Brian Cox. Owen Wilson in The Minus Man. Remember this movie? Did you ever see this movie? I, I remember liking this movie. I'll probably not like it. Uh, Nancy Savoka, who made the movie Dogfight. Household Saints, another movie I really, really liked when I first saw it. So you go, Kino Lorber. And then some classic films here. Uh, you Never Can Tell with Dick pa I mean, I, come on. I love these classic films. You never can tell. You never can tell. And The Looters, which... Uh, again, Rory Calhoun for you Motel Hell fans. Wow, look at that. The looters. All right. So those are Blu-rays coming from Kino Lorber, coming in hot. But that's not, I mean, look, I like that Phantasmagoria movie. These are going to fall, um, which it looks good. But that's not what Kino Lorber. Kino Lorber, to me, delivered something, one of the, one of the releases in 4K of the year, Comes from Kino Lorber. Now, again, I've spoken a lot on this show where I've, I've talked about how people, um, you have to train yourself to watch certain movies. And one of my very favorite directors is somebody uh, that most of his films, you have to bring a new mindset to it. You got to sit down. You got to just slow your roll and sit down and just look at the beauty, the gorgeousness of, I'm speaking, of course, about the great Russian director, Andrei Tarkovsky, who actually was, he went, he was exiled. He, he exiled himself. He went to Paris. His last film, The Sacrifice, was, if you haven't seen The Sacrifice, it's so good. But one of the first movies I ever saw after I saw Solaris was this. Nostalgia. This movie is stunningly beautiful. If you haven't seen this, this and the mirror, um, this, this, this movie is absolutely stunningly gorgeous, and here is the new 4K restoration. I'm very, very happy to have this movie in 4K. Uh, I don't, I don't, is this the first 4K Tarkovsky that we've received? Is Andre Rublev in 4K? I'm not sure. I have to look into that, but having this in 4K from Kino Lorber, 
Thank you, Kino Lorber, from the bottom of my heart. Again, I don't know who you're laundering money for. I don't know if it's the cartels. I don't know who, but God bless them. To keep, they keep allowing you to put these out, and you always have sales. I love you, Kino Lorber. I now have an Andre Tarkovsky version of Nostalgie in 4K. Now, can you do everything else? Can you do the mirror? Can you do the sacrifice? Can you do Andre Rublev? You know, wouldn't that be cool? Um, who knows? Maybe they will. But um, wow, that's really great. I don't think you could do actually Andre Rublev. That's probably Criterion's. And now. You know, we t- I haven't opened this. We talked about this. We talked about this cover. And I have to say, I, I bagged on this cover. I bagged on it because the original, I think it's, what is it, John Berkey art. You know, well, let's open this together. 1976, Petrox. When you saw it well, as a kid, I'm like, ooh, Petrox. The name of the Petrox Chemicals or whatever, the name of the company. This is these King Kong, John Gillerman's. Magnum Opus. When the Mike Kong die, everybody cry. That's what that's what Dino De Lorena said about this movie. I'm gonna see. Look, what is this? Why do people do this shit? You know, you take this off. It, it leaves adhesive on the slip case, but luckily it's that adhesive that you can you can just kind of get off there. But there we go. Oh, oh. But then you still have to like use some kind of cleaner to get the last of it off. The last residuals. I hate that. It just drives me crazy. But anyway. Here it is, the King Kong Steelbook, 1976 Kong. Saw it in the theater when it originally opened. Look at this. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, isn't it crazy that Godzilla and Kong are in the theaters together today and we're getting this while Kong is in the theater? I mean, the second Kong film that was made back in 1976. I mean, I got to say, look at that. Come on, that is some dope-ass shit. That is some great production art. And then, I mean, I know they had to, like, put Jessica Lang in there. Okay. I don't hate this as much as I thought I would. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Obviously, you got your... Do you want your digital code? I never use these. But uh, here's what the inside looks like. Got a dinosaur in there. Fork. Uh, I, should, I, I should probably put the digital codes in. People would be appalled to know I usually throw them away, but whatever. Um, here they are. Here it is. The King Kong Steelbook. I haven't looked at this transfer, obviously. You just showed me open this box. Uh, you just saw me open this box. But you know what? I got to say, all right, if you, you know, they replaced the jet fighters, which are not in the movie, with helicopters. They made it more realistic. I don't hate this. I think it's kind of fun. I'll put it in one of my covers so this part doesn't get wrecked. Um, why not? Okay. I'll take it. You go. Not bad. Not bad. And you know what else? It's always a good day when you get a box from the UK. I got a box from the UK. It's going to be a good day. My favorite home video company, Second Sight themselves, putting out the Hitcher soon. They've been they they their possessor 4K. Uh, If you if you want, go watch Twin Flicks. You know, the guys, the brothers at Twin Flicks are doing some great work as they do their comparisons between Blu-rays and 4Ks. Uh, Go check them out. Um, you know, I should have called him and said, come on this show today because, um, Dieter wasn't here. I didn't think about that because I'm too selfish. No, I'm just too, uh, between the two projects I'm working on. So here it is from Second Sight, Borderlands, a movie I've never even seen. Never even seen. Um, look at that. I, you know what? I always take these. I don't care if you get mad at me. I always take these off unless they're limited edition box sets, but Borderlands, never seen this film, but here it is. The Second Sight box set of borderlands this is i believe a i don't think this is 4k but like second sight does you know you get art cards art cards i will not show them all to you because you know but then there's a book they always put out great books and there's always great essays in these books so what i love about their these films is you always learn about them at the time of its release borderlands was barely given its due There you go. And um, final prayer, faith and skepticism in the borderlands. Let's see. This is good. Deacon is not a poster boy for the Catholic faith, but a man who continually wrestles with it. Right up my, you said it wasn't real, found footage horror and the futility of faith in the borderlands. See, already, already I'm interested in this movie, and I've just been reading excerpts from the book. That's why I love what 
what Second Sight does. And I got to say, man, since I first bought my first Second Sight disc, which was Betty Blue, I think, I don't know, 12 years ago or something, uh, they've never let me down. I've never been let down. Everything that they do, I would. you should just buy it and support them because everything they do, and I will never, ever, 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 ever be more grateful than I am to get that Second Sight box set of Dawn of the Dead, which is the greatest single movie release in physical media history. I never thought I'd want to get rid of my Japanese Laserdisc box set, but then along came Second Sight and said, hold my beer, uh, which I did, and I, I love that box. I Sometimes I just hold the box up and sing hymns to it, you know, because why not? Uh, anyway, so that's that's my haul for the week. That's what I got for the week. That's what came in. There really, really wasn't much stuff, you know, um, but I love that Borderlands. I mean, I've, I've got a big box coming at some point from Vinegar Syndrome, and uh, let's see what you guys are, uh, are, are saying about things, because I don't know, I'll have to look, um, and we'll see what you guys are saying, because I can't know until I actually look. Um, Uh, let's see, um, as I'm looking, uh, okay, here we go, uh, B Depp says, hey Rob, happy birthday, great marathon MOC yesterday, gotta say you're a hell of a human being, <laughs> that was a, that was our, our, uh, member call, great marathon member call yesterday, it really was, gotta say you're a hell of a human being, thank you, uh, happy to be a supporter of your channel. By the way, don't take your eye off those puppies. Yeah, so we had a really long member call. Uh, we had Elon, who was in Israel uh, before uh, the missiles. He, they knew that something was going to happen, and Iran attacked. And uh, so we talked a lot about that at the end. I'm glad he is safe, and he was eating Zionist Krispy Kreme donuts. So things are not that bad. Um, so... Uh, 1001 Johnny said he celebrates 10 months of membership, the third Kong film raw, but it's the first remake. Uh, is it the third Kong film? I mean, are you counting Godzilla versus Kong and King Kong escapes? I mean, cause you could, those are, those are, those are King Kong movies, I guess. Um, so, but yeah, it is the first remake. I guess it would be, it would really technically be the fourth Kong film. Because you've got the Willis O'Brien Kong, you've got Godzilla vs. Kong, you've got King Kong Escapes, and then you've got this Kong. So that's the fourth Kong film, right? Uh, I don't know. To Underwatch Studio says, is the King Kong 76 4K Steelbook transfer better than the 4K, the UK 4K transfer? I don't know. The revisionist color grade was off-putting. To be honest, To Underwatch Studio, I cannot answer that for you. Uh, because I haven't watched it. You just saw me unbox it now. I, I will. I did not get the UK 4K. Um, or did I? I mean, I got I got the, the, the I had the Blu-ray of King Kong um, that I got from Japan, I think, back in the day when I first started collecting uh, Blu-rays. So um, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that. So I, uh, I can't tell you. So... Um, if Hitchhiker 42, uh, said that Amazon said my Conan set was lost in the post and refunded me. I hope it will turn up, but I will not pre-order one when I can get two at twice the price. <laughs> uh, Dieter Bastion says, congrats Rob on nine years, nine years of doing YouTube. Sorry, I couldn't be there. Let's see if we can make it nine years together, two or more. Fallout, 9.5 out of 10. I've only watched the first episode of Fallout, and I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was good. Hayden Center says, hey, Rob, hope you're doing good, man. I am doing good. Um, Swift718 with a $10 super chat says, happy ninth YouTube anniversary. I was watching you guys on that episode. Salud. I didn't, you know, all I have is water. I have no alcoholic beverages, so I can't uh, toast you properly. But our old friend, Manowar665, the neighbor of the beast, which I always loved, has become a member of the channel. Thank you, sir. Believe in yourself. Uh, that's like the, that's like a uh, Sticks lyric. Believe in yourself has become a new member. 
The Richard obviously has become a new member of the channel, and Jeffrey Johnson is a new member of the channel. Um, 1001 Johnny says, Son of Kong, I dis you disappoint me. You're right. I forgot about Son of Kong. I, I, you know what? I've never seen Son of Kong, to be honest. So, but you didn't get King Kong or King Kong, uh, Godzilla versus King Kong or King Kong Escapes, so we're both wrong. Paul Allen Brunotto says, congratulations, Rob, for nine years being on YouTube. It's also the 30th anniversary of Turner Classic Movies cable channel, so let's celebrate classic movies. That was a $20 Super Chat, Paul. That's very kind of you. And that was your 10th Super Chat. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, it's an amazing time to be alive. Uh, you know, I watched a really an interesting, I, I, I think it's Alien Theory is the channel. I believe, and Alien Theory did a really great recap of the uh, transfer of alien that aliens that we're still going to be talking about till the cows come home. I'm sure. I would really suggest if you're interested, um, um, uh, if you're interested in in this transfer, and oh, it's it's. It's a good it's a good video. So Alien Theory did a good video on it. Shows a lot of comparisons of the DVD and the Blu-ray, and then the Blu-ray and this new transfer. Uh, Vegas Robocop says we talked John F. Green. How about Kim Ito? You know I didn't ever deal with Kim Ito. I don't know uh, who that is, but um, I I don't know Kim Ito. John Green was the only guy that I knew. And this was, of course, back in the 80s. John Green, I was talking about uh, this with Vegas Robocop the other day. John Green was a guy who used to sell plastic model kits, and he had vintage plastic model kits. He had hundreds of plastic model kits, and he sent out this newsletter. And, um, um, I, you know, I loved it. I didn't know who Kim Ito was. Speaking of newsletters, I want to direct everybody once more to Doug Pratt, Douglas Pratt's the DVD, the Laserdisc DVD newsletter. I know he's keeping the title. He didn't kick it up, but you know, I've been reading the uh, Laserdisc DVD newsletter since the '80s. Uh, before it was introduced to me by my friend Craig Highland at Videophile up on Capitol Hill on Broadway in Seattle. One of my oldest friends in the world. I started going into Videophile in 1984, 40 years ago. Craig Highland and I have been friends for 40 years. So, and that's you know. Douglas Pratt's newsletter. I think that it might have come after we met. I'm not sure, but Douglas is still doing it. You can get it online. You can subscribe, support Douglas. Uh, he always does. His writing is great on new transfers and things like that. And uh, it's still going strong. I used to also buy the hard copy version. It was just a, it was like a printed, you know, he just printed it himself. And, but Tower Records used to sell it. And I would buy the Laserdisc newsletter. Now it's the Laserdisc DVD newsletter and look into it. Tell Douglas Pratt that I sent you and that this show sent you, so go get it. His writing is definitely worth reading. Uh, James Troutner uh, says, upgraded the membership to friend of the channel. James, thank you very much for that. And we will have another member call in two weeks. But you know, if you're not having a member call, you can join A24. <laughs> By the way, they're not... They're not uh, they're not paying me to do this. Uh, I am not being sponsored by A24. But, you know, I have to say, I love getting shit like this in the mail. It's just a delight. So, I guess if you joined A24, you can get this in the mail, too. Martino! Martino Simoni has gifted five Burnett Work memberships. Well, thank you, Martino. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, so, physical media, let's talk about... The news. There's some good news. Good news this week. Or bad news. Let's talk about the Dune 2 4K disc, shall we? Here's the Steelbook. So Dune 2 is obviously coming out. It's coming out next month. But there's a lot of special features that are apparently not on this disc. They're only going to be available digitally. That's not cool. Not cool. Why you got to do that? Why you got to play me like that? Come on, France. Uh, I don't like that. I don't. I. I. I it, it's like, look. We all know that physical media's uh, best days are behind it. But however, we are living in a golden age of physical media. 
we are getting the fact that we're getting releases like Second Sight's releases, like Borderlands. I mean, you know, the reason that I like this is because I still love cinema. But what I like about getting special editions, I mean, if you look, if you look at the special editions, this makes a movie, even a movie like Borderlands, special. You know, even though it's just in a little box, the fact that it, it just the feel of it, ooh, <laughs> um, just because you you've got something like this, it adds an air of, you know, it's it, in a way this little box celebrates all the work and all the talent that was involved to bring these movies to light, and that's why we don't get a lot of that. You know, you certainly don't get a lot of that, and and the same is true of Arrow. I mean, obviously. I will never understand why Universal licensed this out to Arrow, but God bless them for doing so. I mean, first of all, how long did it take? Why didn't Universal put Conan out in 4K? I, I don't know. Do the people at Universal not know they own this movie? I mean, this movie's 42 years old. It took them 42 years to get it out in 4K. Uh, Conan the Destroyer is a little younger. But when you have something like this, you know, it, it. in my mind, when you have it on the shelf, if you're a cinephile, this makes it special. And even though, you know, I used to love Laserdisc jackets because they were huge and awesome. But having these box sets, it adds an air of speciality. I mean, it makes you feel good about them. And, and, and you know, a lot of the time people can't afford that. But the fact that a company like Second Sight will take a movie like The Borderlands and give it this treatment, that's why, I mean, even It Follows. It Follows is a movie I still think has some really great, some of the greatest creepy moments in modern horror cinema but the the care i mean it comes in an, that special feed that special edition is even though it's i think it's in 4K it's a blu-ray regardless the transfer of it follows is stunning and that's what really matters and and second sight they spare no expense whether you get martin whether you get dawn of the dead whether you get it follows whether you go back in time and you get revenge or you get diva or, or diva i always say that's a good one they put out betty blue not diva but it, you should put out diva in 4k please somebody um uh i need it i love that movie but second sight god i'll just i'll buy anything they put out uh it was rumored they're going to do near dark i've never heard any confirmation of that especially from second sight but please do and maybe go again go to 20th century fox and get barbarian and the empty man and while you're at it my, maybe they'll give you a uh, strange days and soderberg solaris because those would be good releases for you too i mean a little off brand but anyway what was i saying something i don't remember but so dune we are getting it but what is what is up with that warner brothers i mean again if it's actually i have to say this cover is pretty dope i will say this cover is dope um i like it um but still not having Special features. I mean, Dune had some pretty good special features on the first Dune. Um, I appreciated that, and and to not to have a lot of these special features go digital only. Now, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I I seem to people keep writing in to I I mean I don't have a confirmation, but people keep writing in and asking me what I think about it. I think it sucks if that's true. Give us a second disc and give us the special features, because. Physical media needs it, and that's what physical media people, when we're buying it, we want the special features. That's the whole point. That is the whole point. But anyway, I'm going to buy Dune 2 anyway, because the Dune, the first Dune disc, is it, it's reference quality. It's unbelievable. The Atmos track is astonishing. The whole movie is astonishing. The recording of that movie, I don't know I don't know what magic Denis Villeneuve brings, but Blade Runner 2049, Dune, and now Dune 2 have three of the greatest sound mixes ever ever done, especially in the modern era. Uh, my God, Denis Villeneuve knows. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how they recorded. Like when you listen to the, the Atmos track in Dune, when you hear the voice at the beginning, and then you hear a Hans Zimmer score, it's amazing. It's just amazing. I love that. It's so good. Um, so incredible. We know, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, I did cover Megalopolis the other night. Um, his movie One from the Heart is chock a block full of brand new special features. I mean, this movie is insanely beautiful, and obviously, we're getting this is One from the Heart reprise, the reprise edition, and obviously, like he did with Cotton Club. If you guys don't have his new version of Cotton Club, why? It's so good, and um, this One from the Heart, I'm really looking forward to. It has both the original theatrical release from back in the '80s and this new reprise edition, and a lot of great special features finally coming out. Can't wait 
to get it. Here's something unexpected from Kino Lorber, although it should never be unexpected when Kino Lorber does something because you never know what they're going to do. All the way back to the 40s, man, Orson Welles' version of Macbeth. All the way back to the 40s, uh, Kino Lorber putting it out, a new restoration on Blu-ray. I've never seen this. I've never seen this. I'm very curious to see it. I mean, you know, Polanski did a version of Macbeth. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Uh, all the way back to the 40s. You go, Kino Lorber. You go. Once again, Kino Lorber, just bringing the heat, or at least bringing me movies I've never seen that I've wanted to see for, well, the better part of my life. Now I can. Big bad Will Shakespeare coming out hot with Richard Richard Burton, with Orson Welles. Uh, but that's kind of neat. What else we got? We got Magic Mike in 4K. And you know what? I'm straight. But I'm gay adjacent, and I I I won't I won't uh, all freely admit that a little man flesh in this movie is great. You know, it's always an inspiration as I get older to want to look like these guys again. Maybe one day I'll start a workout regimen and eat right so I can look like them. Maybe it'll never happen. But you know what? I can always aspire. I actually like this movie. In all honesty, I like this movie. I think it's pretty great. Uh, a lot of fun and getting it in 4K coming out from Warner Brothers. And I don't hate this cover. I mean, at least this kind of sells what the movie is which is a, a nice change of pace. Um, now this, if Imprint did not already impress with their box set, box set number six of the TV shows, they're putting out the Prisoner 1,500-piece box set. Woo! What were they going to follow it up with? Who knows? Oh, we do now. The Persuaders. That's right. Tony Curtis and Roger Moore. The complete series. My God, the Persuaders. Oh yeah. Now this is this is what I live for. Love seeing this coming out. I have not seen all these episodes. I've only seen a few of the Persuaders episodes in various collections in the past. Uh, I can't wait to get this. This is a very cool cool thing that they're putting out. I know most people probably are like, "What?" I know Tony Curtis and Roger Moore. Get on down. Now, this next release, I think it's coming from a... So, this is another movie coming up that I... Somebody once told me this movie's like the the um, Breakfast Club of Japan. And it's called Typhoon Club, a 4K restoration. And I, I, you know, I forgot to... I think it's from a new company, a 4K restoration of Typhoon Club... Uh, Blu-ray.com, you can go look at, the, watch the trailer. This is supposed to be, an, it's a Japanese film, an incredibly beautiful Japanese movie about youth in school um, and, you know, high school kids during a typhoon and <laughs> putting on a talent show or something. But I've always wanted to see this movie. I've never seen this movie. I've heard it's great. I'm looking forward to it. That's why I love physical media and being able to finally get things like this. I can't wait to see it. Really excited. This is, by the way, from 1985. That's why people say it's like the Japanese Breakfast Club. I don't know if that's true, but it's called Typhoon Club, so which is cooler than just being a breakfast club. Uh, but anyway, this is coming out, and I forget the company that's putting out putting it out. But look for that. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Uh, this one, Powell and Pressburger, another movie. You know, they did, of course, Tales of Hoffman, and they did uh, The Red Shoes, and of course, Michael Powell directed Peeping Tom, which Criterion's putting out in 4K. That came out in the UK in 4K already, if you haven't seen it. People called it Britain's Answer to Psycho, but it's really not. But still, I love Peeping Tom. Anyway, small back room on Blu-ray uh, coming out from Studio Canal. Studio Canal, their vintage classics. Wow, uh, looking forward to getting this. I know that guy looks like Ray Fiennes, but he's not. Um, Powell and Pressburger, you know. Tales of Hoffman was one of George Romero's favorite movies. Just saying. So they're putting out Small Back Room, which I've, again, never seen. Can't wait to see it. Speaking of another vintage classic film that is going to come out and uh, can't wait to get it because whether it's Kind Hearts and Coronets or The Lady Killers or whatever, bring on Alec Guinness in The Lavender Hill Mob. Yeah. Um, this movie's great. And it's a glittering new 4K restoration. I think, I don't know if this is in 4K or not, but it's coming out as a 4K restoration. I love this movie when I was a kid. Um, you know, got to love that Brit British humor. Got to love that British fun. you got to love young Alec Guinness being funny. And um, can't wait to see this. So, hey, bring it on. Lavender Hill Mob, yes. Yes, please. 
Uh, can't wait to have it. Coming out from Shout, John Sturgis Power. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Sturgis, I got to, you know, uh, John Sturgis is one of the great directors of the 60s. I got to give a shout out to Mary Forrest. Uh, when we first met, Mary Forrest gave me the Criterion Laserdisc of Bad Day at Black Rock because I had mentioned specifically I didn't have that Laserdisc and it had John Sturgis' commentary. I think it's the only commentary he ever did. I'm not sure. But this is a Magnificent Seven steelbook. Of course, this is John Sturgis' answer to Seven Samurai. Uh, I love this movie. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Yul Brenner plays a robot in this. Oh, no, wait. He plays a robot in Westworld that's based on his character from this movie. Either way, it's all good. You got to get it. John Sturgis, you know, it's not the Satan bug, but hey, it's the Magnificent Seven. And yes, you need to have it. And here we get to, this is, this is I would like to call this the Irene Jobson release of the week. You know, I'm not going to lie. I bought some porn in my time. I bought some porn. I've got some good porn. I love 70s bush porn restorations, things like Barbara Broadcast, Henry Paris, a.k.a. Radley Metzger. Uh, bought some of that, you know, got that restoration. This was not on my 19 or 2024 bingo card. This is one of the first porn films that I owned because it was science fiction. I could get away with it because it was science fiction. This is a post-apocalyptic pornographic film. Uh, the premise of the movie is after nuclear war, there are people that people you can't touch another human being without getting violently ill, except some people can still there's I think they're called sex positives and sex negatives. And if you're a sex positive, you are forced to perform live in in front of people so they can watch porn. I'm, of course, speaking of the classic 80s. I mean, it's not quite new wave hookers. But it's close. Post-apocalyptic sex film. That's right. Cafe Flesh. A staple of my VCR when my parents weren't home. And, you know, I had a little bit of privacy to do what I had to do. But this is actually, this is really great for that because it's really kind of depressing. But still, it looks good. It's crazy. It's a sci-fi porn film. Cafe Flesh. A sci-fi post-apocalyptic porn film. And it's coming out in 4K. Because God bless them. You know, back when there wasn't as many scars on breasts. Uh, there probably are. I don't remember any because I only ever watched this on VHS. But hey, here it is. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gentle beings, kind souls, however you identify across these, the 28 known galaxies, you too can get Cafe Flesh on 4K. I know. I know you're all excited going, woohoo. Irene Jobson's like, I'm, I, can, I, can, I can feel her. She's rubbing her hands together going, oh, I can't wait. Um, maybe she's not, I, maybe, but it's a, it's an interesting artifact from the early eighties. You can catch a glimpse of what people were watching. It was that transition point between storytelling porn and just, you know, scenario porn. Um, you know, maybe if house of dreams comes out in 4k, I don't know if it ever will, but, but, you know, between Radley Metzger, AKA Henry Paris and, uh, Paul Nevins a.k.a., well, you know you know who he is. But anyway, Andrew Blake, man. Andrew Blake was actually Paul Nevins. I don't know why I'm talking about House of Dreams with Zara White, but you should all watch it if you haven't. Anyway, there you go. Those were the discs that I picked to focus on this week. How exciting for all of us. Uh, or maybe not. I mean, it just depends what you're interested in. A lot of classic titles, a lot of interesting titles. Uh, I would also like to check, you know, I forgot to mention all the partner label titles that Vinegar Syndrome is putting out. Their partner labels have been crushing it. They've been pu putting out some really interesting stuff. I would tell everybody to go to Vinegar Syndrome and um, go to Vinegar Syndrome and pick up any of their partner titles because they're doing a great job. And there's a lot of good stuff there. They're, they keep putting out more and more good stuff. So go to the Vinegar Syndrome website. Check out what they've got. Heck, go to Severn. See what Severn's got. They were sell, they had stuff on sale. You know, Della Morte, Della Moore, They had all kinds of stuff. So, you know, go to all the labels. Check them out. Go to Umbrella. You know, go to Imprint. Go to Indicator. Go to 101. Go to 88. Go to anybody you want. Uh, but just do that. Support physical media in any way, shape, or form. Let's check out what the sales figures are doing this year or this week. Top 20 sellers. 
these are the top 20 sellers uh, entirely in terms of uh, overall sales. So this is every single disc uh, for the week that you can see. Aquaman and the Last at the and the Lost Kingdom, the Iron Claw number two, or pardon me, yeah that's right, Iron Claw number two, number three Migration, number four Wonka, number five Wish, number six Wednesday Season one, nice to get that on on physical media along with the Sandman number number, uh, what is that? Number seven is Aliens, number eight is The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, number nine Paw Patrol, Jungle Pups, and number ten Good. Burger 2. We know who's shopping at Walmart, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, here is the top selling Blu ray discs for the week. Number one, Iron Claw, which is new. Number two, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Number three is Aliens. Now, remember that Aliens Blu ray is the new transfer. Uh, number four is Berserk, the complete 1997 TV series. Number five is Wonka. Number six, True Lies. Number seven, Migration. Number eight, Hunger Games. Number nine, Wish. And number 10, Oppenheimer. And now we bring to a close our news day with the top-selling 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray discs. Of course, James Cameron sits at the top of that pile. Aliens, True Lies, and the Abyss, fueling those online debates that everybody's so pleasure to, pleasurable and... Uh, uh, they're just just all full of, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. You know, I was going to make a joke about how everyone's loving these transfers and has so much good things to say about them, but I'm not going to do that anymore because I killed it. So it's Aliens, True Lies in the Abyss at the one, two, and three spots, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, Oppenheimer, The Hunger Games, Dune Part 1, Wonka at number 8, number 9, as I showed you last week, Primal Gear, a.k.a. Primal Fear, and Criterion on the top 20, or top 10, with To Die For, Nicole Kidman. You know, heartbreak looks good in a place like Criterion. That's right, everybody. So that is what we got. That's what we got. Uh, that is the, all the news that is fit to print. So, yeah, not bad. I would say not bad at all. Uh, let's check in and see what you guys are saying. Uh, Pod Racing Palpatine says, congrats on nine years, your second greatest achievement on YouTube. Your first being falling asleep on a live stream. <laughs> Keep up the great work. Hey, you know, somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. And if that's if that's my only memory, you know, if 100 years, people are going to be like, Rob Burnett, he's that guy that fell asleep live on a, on a live stream. Luckily, I didn't, I, the live stream was over. I just thought I clicked off the the show. Too bad. Uh, but thank you, Pod Racing Palpatine. That's very nice of you. A world in pajamas. Tracy here says, enjoy the rest of the stream. I am off to hijack my brother's house. How do you hijack a house? Before I go, are you going to Japan for Star Wars? Before I go, you going to Japan for Star Wars. Take care and have a lot of fun this week. Oh, you mean the the, the Star Wars celebration? Uh, you know what? I've always wanted to go to Japan. Uh, that's not a bad reason to go. I just... I have to figure out some way to afford something like that. But, um, yeah. Uh, Garrett Groover says, Next year is 20th Century Fox's 90th anniversary. Crossing my fingers, we get some Fox catalog titles in 4K. Hopefully someone from Sony convinces Disney to do it. Uh, you know what? I would hope so because they certainly were lackluster in celebrating their own 100th anniversary. Uh, once again, let's beat the drum for, if nothing else, Fantasia. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and Mary Poppins in 4K, Dolby Vision, new Atmos mixes. Come on, Disney. Why can't we have these things? Why can't we have nice things? What's with you guys, man? Come on. What is with you? Why do you not give us... Why, Damie? Why you not... I, I Come on. I want these things. And we, we just don't get them. And I don't understand why. Why? It, why? Um, why can't we have what we want? I don't know. I mean, we want to buy them. And they don't give it to us. 1001 Johnny says, damn it, Rob, you can't let me know I can spend money on Orson Welles and Shakespeare at the same time. Uh, well, I just did. You're, you're going to spend money on Orson Welles and Shakespeare at the same time. That's why I'm here for you, 1001 Johnny. That's why I, I, that's why I bring you the, the news, all the news that's fit to buy on uh, physical media. Uh, Stubble McShave says, the Persuaders is okay. But the promise of what it could have been was never fulfilled. The writing didn't quite live up to the talent on screen. 
It has the best intro theme song, though. Yeah, it's, you're probably right about that. But you know what? It's still a cool artifact. But then again, I have not seen much of it. That's why I'm going to buy it anyway. Um, and so should you. Support that physical media. Why not? Um, you know, after this, <laughs> I'm like, I'm only an hour into this show, and I don't really have anything more to say. I don't have Dieter to play off of. I don't have him to show stuff. He can't rock me like a hurricane like he rocks you like a hurricane. So maybe this uh, this show, I will just end. I'll end. I've got my energy up, and we've had a nice... I've zinged through the show. I've said what I wanted to say. I'll go be on George the Giant Slayer show where I'm I'm supposed to go. His show starts at noon anyway. Uh, and so maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just go over there and join them early today. So everybody, I'll probably be doing a Rob Observations, but we got family in town. As I said, Elizabeth is having her graduation art show on Tuesday night. She has family coming in from France. And um, there you go. So listen, I want to thank all of you once again. I would like to point out that Max Allen Collins has written, I mean, I I, I, I know that we're going to go to everybody and do a crowdfunding campaign. However, I will say this. I am incredibly excited to create this show for you and to cast it the way we're going to cast it and to bring to you something very, very, very special. And once again, Max Allen Collins, I mean, here's a guy who, you know, uh, he, I, I can't stress enough reading this script, one, that I get to make it, and two, that you guys get to experience it, but three, to work with somebody who's at such a high level, um, to know that, look, I always believe that even, no, it doesn't matter what we're working on, I've always tried to shoot high, but a lot of my career has been taking things that, you know, you, 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 t- you, you do what you can with what you're given. But to be able to start working from a great novel series with a great creator and we're at the top. We're, it's going to be really great to create something from the ground up that aspires to greatness. And I'm I'm really thankful to be working with Max Allen Collins on this. And I can't wait for you to experience. By the way, I think for the crowdfunding campaign, just so everybody has a taste, we will put this first script up as part of the part of the. Uh, when you go to Kickstarter, so you can read it, so you can get a taste of of what the ten episodes are going to be. We're not going to put all the scripts up, but putting this first episode up, you can you can get a sense of what's what's happening and 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 the actual quality of what we're shooting for. So anyway, hope you enjoy that. And on that note, I want to thank Tom Junior Jackson. I want to thank all of you for supporting this channel and keeping me going on on. Because I have to tell you, there's been, there's been some dark dark uh, long dark nights of the soul in the last nine years. Of course. COVID and other things, whether it's professional disappointments, personal disappointments, and um, what I've had, rather than, you know, get a therapist, I just go onto YouTube and talk. Because <laughs> it's like talking to a therapist, I'm just talking into a green light. And you know what, when you're talking, if the if the light was red, I have to tell you, it would have changed something in me psychologically. I'm looking at a green light, what's better, you know, in our culture, green light, red light. So no matter what I say, I'm always being given a green light to say it. Uh, sometimes that's been bad in the past, I know, but still, I want to thank you for that. Unlimited Power asks about uh, what do I think of your Amigo Apes? I think your Amigo Apes were good. I, 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 um, I'm going to show them on Rob Observations, but um, you have a great Mego Apes collection. I think they've made, those are new, are those new Mego Apes? We'll talk about that later, but because uh, it looks like there were apes that they didn't make back in the day. I don't know, because of new Mego Apes or old Mego Apes. I don't know, but they're great. You will see them uh, later. But I think I'm doing a observation tonight, but again, we have we have family coming over, so we'll see. But anyway, thank you all for supporting this channel. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you all for supporting Dieter Bastian. Thank you all for supporting Zarbruck Deutschland, because I'd never heard of Zarbruck in Deutschland before I met Dieter Bastian, and now I... And now I know what a schnepchen is. You know, it's all good. But thank you, Tom Jr. Jackson, for being a great moderator. I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. I want to thank people like Lord Toth and Justin and uh, all the other people that are here that are awesome. So thank you for that. I don't know if Justin Toner's here, but he might be. Lord Toth is here, so I just like saying Lord Toth, which is fun to say. So everybody, you're all the best. 
and uh, come see me again sometime, would you? And on that note, remember, every person you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. And with that, go buy some physical media. Go to Second Sight and buy some shit. And it's not shit. It's great. Get their Possessor 4K because it's awesome.